हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ एल्गोरिथम एंड डेटा स्ट्रक्चर रिलेटेड वीडियो सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट वॉट इज एल्गोरिथम एंड हाउ वी आर यूजिंग एल्गोरिथम्स इन आर डेली लाइफ देन वी विल लर्न अबाउट एल्गोरिथम एनालिसिस एंड डिफरेंट क्राइटेरियाज कमिंग इन टू प्ले वाइल एनालाइजिंग द एल्गोरिथम्स फॉर चूजिंग द मोस्ट ऑप्टिमल एल्गोरिथम एज पर आर रिक्वायरमेंट्स सो विदाउट फर्दर अड यू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड First of all let's start with the basic question what is an algorithm if we follow this definition an algorithm is a sequence of steps to perform a task for the given initial situation or input in other words we can say that it is the step by step process of solving a computational problem okay as shown in this diagram algorithm is a set of instructions to produce an output based on the given input so whatever system we develop first we develop an algorithm to run it now if you are thinking what role algorithms are playing in our life let's see few real life examples actually algorithms are everywhere it was there with us when we were learning how to do addition or subtraction in elementary school if you see in this image these mathematical operation have the initial input right like here we have two numbers 532 and 101 and then we have few predefined steps like how to carry or borrow while performing the addition or subtraction operation and after following those steps we get the desired output as the summation of these two numbers simple no now next example is the algorithm of duckworth lewis method which is used to decide the result whenever an odi or t20 cricket match is interrupted by the rain i'm sure many of us follow cricket and they can relate to this example easily here also we have an initial input as overs to play and the remaining wickets and then we have few defined steps to reach the final winner and the third example is pretty common in our daily life where we find the shortest path from place a to place b on google maps what makes this possible is the underlying algorithm of google maps it is a set of mathematical rules embedded in the software which take two locations as input and provide shortest or less congested path as output Similarly there are countless examples where algorithms are playing key roles in our daily life so now we know that whenever you press a key on your keyboard or make a phone call or perform the calculation or let's say start an application or so on behind the scene an algorithm is getting triggered this is all about the introduction of algorithm now moving towards the next important concept that is algorithm analysis okay now i'll talk about the meaning and need of algorithm analysis as every day we come across many problems or situation where we have one or multiple solutions for solving that particular problem right and among those solutions some may be more efficient as compared to other available options generally we tend to accept the most efficient solution as per our requirement for example let's say we are going back to home from some place there can be n number of possible routes to reach home but we choose only one path to reach our destination that is either the shortest path or the most suitable as per our need the same idea we apply in the case of computational problems like for a particular computational problem we can design multiple algorithms to solve that problem and then we choose the most efficient algorithm out of those drafted algorithms right so we can say that algorithm analysis is the process of analyzing the problem solving capability of that algorithm most commonly in terms of time and memory required to execute that particular algorithm okay so now we will talk about two major reasons for analyzing the algorithms the first reason is to know the efficiency of an algorithm especially for time sensitive and mission critical operations and to explain this in detail let's discuss about atms 
where for withdrawing money from ATM, we have some free predefined steps, right? Like first insert the card, then enter our PIN and so on. You already know the whole drill. And in the last step, we get our desired amount instantaneously. But what we cannot see is that in the background, there is a complex algorithm running, which is communicating with the bank to validate our cash requirement and then providing the exact amount of cash that we have asked for. And please note that all these steps are happening in the real time. So in this case, the efficiency of algorithm is very important. It should be thoroughly analyzed to get the assurance that every time we are getting correct output in expected time interval, right? And the second reason for doing algorithm analysis is to figure out the better and the most optimal approach among the potential solutions that we can find out only after analyzing all the possible approaches. For example, we can reverse a string in n different ways. Here all the possible ways have same input that is original string and produce the same output that is reverse string but by following different approaches which in turn will have different efficiency. So when there are multiple approaches and we need to decide which approach suits best to our need, the algorithm analysis comes for rescue and helps in comparing different approaches. Ok, after analysis, next step is to choose an algorithm. Now I'll talk about the different factors for choosing an algorithm. As discussed a moment back, that for a problem, we can have multiple algorithms and we have to select the most optimal algorithm to implement as a program, right? So the very first thing that we need to consider is the nature and lifetime of the algorithm. For example, if an algorithm is likely to be used only once on a small amount of data, then we should select the algorithm that is easiest to implement, code and implement it and move on to something else. But if the program will be used many times and has a lifetime that makes the maintenance likely, then various other factors comes into play for selecting the final algorithm, such as the very first one is the readability, whether the code that we have written is easily, quickly and clearly understandable by a new person or by someone that has not seen the code in a while. Next is the maintainability, which checks if it is easy to add new features, modify existing features and fix the bugs with minimum efforts and without any impact on other related modules. Ok. Next factor is the portability, which says whether the code has ability to run on as many different machines and operating systems as possible. It would be waste of time and energy for a programmer to rewrite the same code again when it is transferred from one environment to another, right? Next is reusability, if we can easily reuse any component of the existing code. And the last one here is efficiency, which is related to the performance and speed of running the algorithm. We will study efficiency in detail today. Now we will discuss the criteria on which we analyze the algorithm to estimate its efficiency. Okay? First one is the execution time to check if the algorithm is too long and too time consuming or it is very fast and provide result quickly. Second is its memory consumption that we can also see as the space it requires while executing the algorithm. These are the most important criteria on which we analyze most of our algorithms and are also known as time and space complexity. We will discuss about these two topics in more depth in the upcoming videos as time and space complexity is the most important and the basic concept for strong foundation of data structure and algorithms knowledge. There are more criteria that we can take in account as per our process requirement. Like if we if our process is web based or cloud based, then how much data transfer is happening or in other words, 
how much network traffic is getting generated while executing the algorithm. We can also analyze the power consumption or CPU register consumption of the algorithm. These are the few criteria that I have shown and there can be more such criteria depending on the project requirement. Please note that these criteria can't provide the exact values of time and space required. However, analysis of a particular algorithm can provide us the estimate which can be used to study the behavior of that algorithm. All these stats would depend on the multiple factors such as hardware or software configuration of the machine or the number of other processes running in parallel. For example, we have two machines A and B. The hardware and software configuration on these two machines are exactly same. But on machine A, 10 different processes are running along with our algorithm. And on the other hand side, only our algorithm is running on machine B. Now the CPU on machine B will only focus solely on our algorithm while the CPU in machine A has to divide its processing power among 11 different processes. Therefore, machine B will run same algorithm in less time as compared to machine A. This example has shown that exactly same algorithm or code is running differently on different machines. That is why the algorithm analysis can provide the estimate of efficiency but not the exact number like how much time and space it will occupy. Okay, so this was the first video in algorithm and data structure related video series where we understood the concept of algorithm and algorithm analysis. I hope you got very clear understanding of all these topics now. In next video, we will learn about Bigo notation and time complexity. Please let me know in uh, comments that uh, what are your views if you have any more confusions or if you want any more explanation. This is my very first video on my channel and all your views and comments will help me a lot. If you have understood this, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have understood it because it is very important that I get your valuable feedback. Okay, then meet you in the next video. Till then, keep learning and take care. Thank you.